All right, Pisces, welcome to your monthly sidereal astrology forecast for October of 2015. My name is Athen. If you're new to sidereal astrology or new to the channel, be sure to check the description down below because this is different from mainstream tropical astrology and you want to make sure you're watching this for the appropriate sign. So Pisces, let's go and have a look at this month, another powerful month uh, like September was, a lot of important transits. A lot of things involving your ruler Jupiter actually over here in your sixth house. And uh, coming into this month, you know, we had that solar eclipse in your sixth. So new beginnings involving um, your routine, your work environment, your daily activities, uh, maybe with your health or things like that. So things are continuing with that. Now it's about uh, from once there's self-improvement, then things, of course, go into more of the relationship sphere of things where we share ourselves with others and join in the marketplace and exchange once we have that foundation there. Um, so that's a lot like what this month generally is looking like um, with all of this uh, new beginnings around yourself. Uh, there's now uh, unfoldments with the um, relationship things and that's where we're gonna have the new moon in that seventh house and other things which I'll talk about. So this month is split up into two halves uh, in terms of the transit. So I'm gonna talk about things in terms of the first half and the second half of the month. And that'll put it into perspective for more. There's a lot going on. So for more detailed look, do check your weeklies as the uh, October weeklies come out for more information on this. But let's go ahead and start by looking at Saturn. Saturn is going to be transitioning into your ninth house now um, over the next uh, this this month, basically. And he's going into Scorpio. So the energies here are now shifting um, into Saturn in the ninth, which is about you guys maybe, you know, taking seriously things like your philosophy, uh, going back to school, going to university, doing the university studies. Um, it might be learning things like astrology or other spiritual subjects or philosophical subjects, which helps you understand and get a much more foundational perspective on life. So that's what Saturn in the ninth is generally like. And of course, it's going to be different for each of you. But uh, that's the shift, and a lot of you will feel that this month, especially the first half when Saturn starts to make his way into Scorpio and uh, setting the foundations there, which will then form as the foundations for your career front once Saturn goes into your 10th and two years after this transit. So it's about taking that seriously, taking matters like traveling. Uh, for those of you who travel maybe through your work or whatever, it might become heightened with this kind of transit. And um, taking it slow, being patient, and Saturn always pays off where there's hard work. So anything that you do put in hard work into, whether it's with your philosophy or overseas matters, um, it's a great time to do that. And you can find that by the end of this transit, you'll have learned quite a bit, and maybe even culminated and created something very well. This is really good, too, for the career stuff. For those of you who over the past about five years since Saturn started going up your uh, top part of your chart, it's been sort of gaining more recognition, more, you know, your your career and stuff is coming up to the high point too. So continuing with career and stuff like that, because there should be a lot of energy with Saturn up here, you know, generally speaking over the next couple of years. And it's a great time to keep furthering those types of uh, goals and ambitions. So that's going to be significant. Saturn also does sextile up to the North Node in the seventh house. So there is support here with your relationships and one-on-one -on -one connections, like I was saying. Uh, it's all relating to your life path. The past two years has been about you um, connecting to your one-on-one -on -one connections, new and existing uh, relationships. And um, Mercury's retrograde here at the beginning of the month up until the 9th. So you're probably reflecting on a lot of these things, thinking about relationships, redoing it, reworking it. Mercury also rules your fourth house of home and family. So maybe you're restructuring and redoing things around there, at least how you see things there. And that's great. And then on the ninth, all of these things you've learned about relationships and your roots, um, you can start to implement and move forward with once uh, Mercury goes direct. And when he does that, he conjoins up to the North Node with that sextile up to Saturn. So it's quite nice. I think you can learn quite a bit about relationships this early part of the month as well as your uh, sentiments. Then on the 5th through the 8th, Mars opposes up to your secondary or your, what I should say, your modern ruler, Neptune. Um, so here, uh, you guys, interestingly, might actually get quite the motivation. It's been very busy for you, you know, probably, and I've been hearing that in your comments, which really helps too, is that um, there's this busyness about, you know, the sphere, and that's just the case. Your sixth house is your daily activities. It's your work, your, your routine, your health, and Mars here is very active, putting a lot of energy into that. So it's very important that you continuously have that rest and relaxation, like I've been saying. That's going to be no exception this month, getting that spiritual time out, and um, even things relating to your finances and spirituality and your wisdom 
and all these ninth house activities that Mars rolls up there. Again, faith and trust in those areas, this early part, and you'll find that things are unfolding as they should in the right timing by having that trust in the whole process. Now, um, with that being said, you know, uh, there's still a lot of opportunities here for you to continue to expand on the uh, daily level or with your work, etc. And that's great. Uh, so it's not about going to the, any extremes either, of going too far into the extreme of isolation or hiding away, not going to the extreme of just getting so caught up in the daily activities that you've completely lost touch with, you know, the present moment or with God or however you see that. So, or both, however you see that. So that energy here um, is needing that balance. And it's really about seeing that there's really no difference between um, what's spiritual and what's going on in the daily level, and then how much your spirituality actually does require you to have some sort of work or craft or something you're of service to that helps spread that spiritual energy. So that'll be important all month, but from the 5th to the 8th, especially relating to uh, maybe the finances or the uh, travel or philosophical aspects of those areas. Now, Jupiter trines up to Pluto here from the 6th to the 16th, first half of the month. Very powerful Pluto is going to be this month, uh, trining up to these fast-moving planets over here in your 6th. So Pluto in your 10th has been about restructuring your career, so that it is more meaningful, so it is more true to you and really drawing your line maybe at the career side of things or in the you know, work environment where you're having to you know, really step into your power maybe taking on responsibility, but maybe just really saying things from the heart is the best way to utilize this, but things that need to be said, you know, or just things that need to be done and restructuring and rechanging the career side of things or public or legacy or whatever it is that you do for your service work. And that there is creating a very support, very positive support for you with the, um, all this unfoldment of the, um, daily stuff. So uh, with Jupiter in particular, there is, again, opportunities for you to expand on the work and service level and in the career level. And all of that can be uh, quite powerful um, this early part of the month with this Pluto trining up to Jupiter. I think you're just willing to make some big changes, um, depending on your personal chart, the, the, the size of these changes, but uh, should be quite, you know, structural changes to um, either the work stuff or career stuff, which could be quite harmonious and could be creating more opportunities for you, actually. Again, you have to look at the personal chart to make that kind of prediction, but, um, it, you know, it could be quite positive, especially in the career and work sector because of this aspect with Jupiter. And Jupiter is, of course, your traditional ruler, too, so you guys should be feeling quite powerful, like uh, you could really make change, and I think you're just wanting to make change, and, and it's uh, listening to that guidance and implementing it could go far this month. All right, so uh, Venus is going to be squaring up to Saturn from the 10th to the 11th. It's nothing new here. This has been going on for the past few couple months since she's been retrograde and uh, gone over that Saturn a few times. So uh, here with the things relating to your communications and with the deeper aspects of life, take it slow, take it nice and easy. Uh, square from Saturn does suggest that there's patience with the, the and needs extra attention with the correspondence and the communications and things like that from the 10th and the 11th. On the 12th, we've got the new moon, which is taking place um, in that seventh house. So there's new beginnings now unfolding for you in the relationship sphere. Again, this could be new relationships, existing relationships, uh, but it is uh, starting to unfold. You'll notice this energy continuously as we get to the full moon phase of this month, so as the month progresses, but also over the next coming months, since that's part of the solar cycle, at which time uh, in six months from now, you'll have a full moon here in that seventh. So it's a lowering of energy's time. It's more of a receptive time, but um, there is new things shaping up. Now, it is a challenging new moon in that it's forming a T-square up to that Uranus-Pluto square that's been going on for many years. So you may need to bring extra attention to the relationships, really decide that maybe there's some actions you have to take, something you have to do, uh, which is about your freedom, having more freedom, more enjoyment of your life, which is Uranus in the first house, and then again incorporating all of your relationships so that they're more in alignment with your career goals or your legacy and your future goals. You know, that's the 10th house. And so finding a way to kind of synergize that, work with it, um, then can become very constructive actually with that T-square. Now let's go and shift gears to the second half of the month from the 14th to the 19th. Mars is trining up to that Pluto. So um, again, very supportive for the work and career stuff, I would say, this month. Now Mars in particular is about the financial and the um, philosophical outlook on things. So that stuff probably starts to pick up. Or maybe if you're thinking about making major changes to your finances or to 
your assets, your values in life, or maybe even your philosophy. This could be a very powerful month to do so. Um, the second half in particular. And I say that also because Mars is going over Jupiter, who's expanding those areas. So some of you might be seeing opportunities with those sectors and you could be quite motivated actually in the career front if you aren't already with Mars uh, going over your ruler of your 10th house, which is Jupiter. So you guys should be quite motivated. There can be a lot done and uh, new opportunities at work could certainly be the case or at least new motivations, I'll just put it that way. And then you can make those you know, opportunities into reality, but you got to implement it. You got to put in that action, which is Mars, get that health taken care of that diet, the routine, the energy management, time management, because that's the sphere this is all happening in. 16th and 17th, Venus opposes up to Neptune. So here again, the same mantra of balancing, you know, spiritual with the daily activities and seeing them as one. And this is going to be especially the case with your communications since Venus rules your third house. Then let's go and jump to the next most significant aspect of the month, which is at the very end uh, from the 23rd to the 25th. We've got um, Venus trining up to Pluto. And so uh, now things start to get very supportive and you can really convey your ideas quite powerfully. Um, your concept, your minds, your daily activity should be quite powerful already this month, but I would say especially when it comes to correspondence and your communications by the end of it. Um, and then Venus does go over that Jupiter on the 25th. So uh, again, there's just this expansion of your ideas, and I think a lot of you might be experiencing some new concepts, some new outlooks on life, new opportunities to share, learn, read, write, teach, things like that, and even enjoying the career stuff. Because again, Jupiter rules your 10th, conjoining Venus, which is about enjoyment. You guys can certainly enjoy that. Um, and again, Mercury is going to be opposing up to this Uranus. So the importance with this is, again, balancing self and other. With all these new beginnings in the relationship sphere of things, it's important to remember that um, you know this whole past uh, you know five years or so with Uranus in your first house. It's about having more freedom in your relationships, having more freedom with yourself, expressing your true self, and incorporating that in a healthy way um, with your one-on-one -on -one connections. Then the month tops off on the 27th when we have the full moon in the second house of finances and material values. So a lot of you will be experiencing a culminating point of that or at least an awareness of the financial or material stuff. If you've been focused on this area, uh, over the past six months, this can be the high point of that. But in either case, an awareness and seeing things very clearly in terms of your values and your confidence and self-esteem should be quite high actually by the end of the month. By the way, Mars is already up here at the top of the charts. Your energy levels have been improving over the past month. And um, this could be um, a new found sense of esteem about what you can accomplish, what you can do. And um, it's all tied into your relationships and uh, your values and relationships and that sort of thing. So Pisces, have a great month. If you guys have any questions, please do let me know. Thanks for watching. If you'd like a personal reading, click the link down below and I'll see you all next time. Take care.